Well, good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year. And thank you for joining our first lecture in 2023. We greatly appreciate your support and interest in contributing to the knowledge economy. My name is Gwen Devereaux, and I'm a member of the Board of Directors of Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Health. Gateway is located in Godrich, Ontario, and to our knowledge is the only rural health research center in Canada, governed by a volunteer board of directors and independent of academic associations, um, but with strong partnerships with several universities, colleges, and healthcare facilities. Gateway aims to advance rural health teaching and research across Huron, Perth, Bray, and Bruce counties, relevant to all rural communities. Our mission is to improve the health and quality of life of rural residents through research, education, and communication. Almost two years ago, Gateway launched this virtual lecture series when social isolation was top of mind with the COVID-19 restrictions continuing to heighten. And there was no better way to launch, or no better time actually to, to launch this initiative. Through this lecture series, we hope to promote a culture of rural health knowledge and innovation with virtual connecting individuals and communities to help reduce social isolation. We give diplomas actually at the end of each semester to those with perfect attendance to recognize your commitment to and involvement with this education series. Today's speaker is Becky Higgs. And Becky is a research assistant at Gateway and an active counseling psychology master's student. Today, she is presenting an introduction to Shed Talks a tool to assist farmers. And I won't go any further because Becky will explain all of that. Um, and Becky grew up on a farm outside of Godrich. So she has some personal insight into life on the farm. Our panelists today are Diane Bergsma. Diane and her husband, Alan, have been blessed with seven children and two grandchildren. Al and Diane operate a hog and cash crop farm near Shetland, Ontario. Diane also enjoyed a teaching career. In 2019, Al and Diane, along with their son, Dallas, expanded their farm operation, including two new hog finishing barns. And Diane retired from teaching to help on the farm full time. Dallas passing two years later was a crushing blow, but the loss is slowly becoming the catalyst and the calling to come alongside struggling farmers and first responders through the newly formed charity called Three, Oak, Three Oaks Cabin. Sorry about that. You now look at a big G um, because we were having some, some problem earlier with that. But um, Tom Lady, uh, another panelist, uh, is a retired dairy farmer and a person who has experienced an episode of mental illness. He understands the strain of farming and how the strain can push a person into an unknown and unfamiliar circumstance for the whole family. Through help from friends and family, he recovered with a new knowledge, the knowledge that this situation made him stronger and a better person and that stress can bend you. It doesn't have to break you. There is a solution for every problem. Life is good. Sometimes we just must look at it from a different direction. Lauren Van Uick is an engaging speaker, registered social worker, foster mom, and agriculture mental health advocate. She has appeared in numerous radio, television, and print articles concerning the issues of adoption, foster care, mental wellness, and mental health in the agriculture sector. She and her husband raise sheep in southwestern Ontario, and as a founding member and CEO of the National Farmers Mental Health Alliance. Loren seeks to meet the needs of farmers across Canada and the US. And we have Margaret Vincent, who is a member service representative for the Ontario Federation of Agriculture. She is a farmer's well being advocate, and her team at the OFA has developed three new farmers' well being initiatives under Agriculture Wellness of Ontario. The three programs include Farmers Wellness Initiative. Guardian Network and In the Know, all programs that center around free counseling, workshop, and 24-7 help crisis lines for farmers. 
thank you panelists for your time and insight today. And I'll pass this back to you, Becky, to begin today's discussion. Yeah, just bear with me. I'm just gonna try to share my screen here. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 20th lecture series. I just want to thank you all for being here, and I hope you all had a wonderful and safe holiday. So for today's um, lecture series, we are presenting the Shed Talks Project, which is a farmer's well-being pillar. And as um, Gwen had mentioned, I'm a research assistant here working primarily on the Farmer's Wellbeing Project. I also did grow up on a farm just outside of Goddard, so this is definitely a project that's near and dear to my heart as I had seen these unique challenges firsthand. So for today's lecture, we're gonna have an introduction of our Shed Talks project. We're gonna present some of the feedback from our surveys distributed at the Shed Talks launch, some well-being resources, and a panelist conversation to, to finish the presentation. So the Shed Talks project is based off the Men's Shed Association, which is a peer-run group developed in Manitoba. It is developed to target isola isolation among retired men and it gave retired men to, the opportunity to engage in meaningful projects for their communities and activities such as sports and music. So SHED stands for Sustaining, Sustaining a Healthy Farms Through Empowerment and Dedication. The mission with SHED Talks is to create a communal and collaborative space for farmers to gather, to build connections and to support one another. With SHED Talks, we want to invite farmers to attend these SHED Talks monthly. And for Gateway's participation, we want to help facilitate the first four Shed Talks and eventually give the farmers the resources to continue this on their own and perhaps in their own comfortable groups as well. So with Shed Talks, we are driving the four C's, which is community, conversation, connection, and collaboration. So with the community piece, we're trying to create and empower an agricultural community. With the conversation piece, we not only want to start the conversations, around some sensitive agricultural issues, but also keep these conversations and connections going as well. We also wanna have a collaboration piece. So this looks like co collaborating with professionals, hired speakers, agricultural organizations and community as, as well to find better ways to support and appreciate our farmers. The last piece of Shed Talks is the connection piece, which is perhaps the most important part of our mission with Shed Talks. So it's really driving those connections between farmers and communities, farmers between agricultural organizations, and most importantly, that farmer to farmer connection. Creating that buddy system approach and that check-in system among farmers is essentially one of our main missions with Shed Talks. So this kind of looks like if there is a farmer attending these Shed Talks monthly, seems to be really enjoying these Shed Talks and all of a sudden there's that disconnection between some communication with farmers, this would be a good inclination to farmers to kind of check in with that farmer that stopped attending these shed talks, maybe they're having a busy week, a heavier workload, or this could also be a time that they could appreciate some additional support or a friend as well. So provided at each shed talk, there'll be hired speakers, resource handouts, some laptops, projectors, chairs, and podiums, and some refreshments for the farmers as well. So recently we launched the shed talks project, November 4th at the Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Health office. Here we recognize the need to keep our farmers our number one priority and the health of, of them as well, because they truly are the backbone of our communities driving both our local and rural economies. So we had the opportunity to present to about 25 farmers along with some council members that joined us and brought greetings um, to support the project as well. We had the opportunity to hear from Josh Groove, who is an accountant at PTMG in Exeter, who touched on the farm, on farm succession planning and the importance of doing this early enough to ensure that this is the least stressful and most efficient process for all families. We heard from Tom Lady, who is, as mentioned, is on our panel today and who has had the courage to share his personal story and some of the challenges that he faced as a dairy farmer. We also had Margaret Vinson, who's also on our panel today, um, who had the opportunity to to share briefly about some farmers wellness initiatives developed by the OFA. 
We also had a farmer share on one of the surveys that sometimes no topic is needed at the Shed Talks and perhaps all they need is just to get together. So we want this project to be tailored to the farmers and to be valuable, be seen as something that they want to do and valuable. And for some farmers, they said that this could look like, oops, sorry. This could look like a Euchre night, sports night or music um, engagement as well. So we had the opportunity to distribute some surveys to the farmers and some off-farm agencies that covered a variety of topics at the Shed Talks launch. Some of the top ranked stressors for each farmer, the availability of farmers, and whether or not they would be able to attend each Shed Talk monthly. And finally, topics that farmers would be able to, that would like to hear for the hired speakers. So as we know, farmers do face a wide variety of daily stressors that are quite unique to only them. Specific to the farmers that did attend the Shed Talks launch, the top five stressors were financial stressors, interpersonal and family relationships, weather dependent stressors, and the worry of livestock and crop well-being, along with workload and labor shortages. To speak on the daily stressor of interpersonal relationships and family relationships, farming truly is an occupation that does not offer shift work. Instead, it's based on productivity and a lot of farmers don't know when they'll be able to quit for the day. And it's often hard for them to schedule um, any commitments. And this lack of flexibility to meet certain family and social commitments truly does have a negative reflection on some of their relationships. And just to speak on the workload and labor shortages, we often speak to farmers needing to take the time off their farm and to take a break. But an additional stressor to this situation is who is able to be trusted to come in and to do the work for them. Another note here with the labor shortages is that often farmers are doing all these isolated tasks and often they're doing them alone, that they actually are three person jobs. With this, with this is an increase of farm injury as well. So having people come in to speak on these topics of labor shortage and risks that come along with it could be extremely helpful. For the attendance part, we had 95.7% of the attendance of the farmers who attended the Shed Talks launch say that they would be able to meet the commitment of um, Shed Talks monthly. We had 4.3% say no and say that the difficulty of scheduling these meetings and Shed Talks monthly would be too difficult for them. We also asked the farmers what would be their most comfortable amount of people that they would like to attend these Shed Talks. Most farmers said 10 to 20 people and the availability for farmers the least busiest months were January to April. And after compiling more of the surveys, the feedback that we received from the farmers on the areas that they would like to discuss um, included discussions around balance and distinction between work and home, coping strategies and stress management, farm succession planning, some interactions with off-farm agen agencies and organizations, farm safety, efficiency, and organization. So just to talk br briefly on the first topic that the farmers would like to hear, we know our farmers are extremely family oriented and value family relationships immensely. And it can be very difficult to put up these boundaries between work and home life due to the fact that farmers do live where they work. And this can feel like sometimes they're being pulled in many different directions. So through our research on farmers' well-being and the opportunity to hear some personal stories and experiences from farmers, it's clear that there is very real and sensitive data surrounding the health of our farmers right now. Resilient, tough, and capable of meeting any challenge is how we know and recognize our farmers. And often this is how they recognize themselves as well. So anything outside of this, farmers and producers tend to perpetuate narratives about themselves that may not be true. And many farmers have said that after COVID-19, it truly was the tip of the iceberg for their well-being. Andrea Jones Bitten, who's a University of Guelph professor that specializes in farmers and vet well-being, health management, and public health, conducted a, a study of 1,100 Canadian farmers and producers and found that 35% met the classification of depression, 48% of farmers met the classification of high stress, and 57% of farmers met the classification of anxiety. So with the depression piece, this is often deepened by the farmer's social isolation, loneliness, feelings of help helplessness, especially when things happen on the farm that they can't control. In regards to high stress, this is often related 
to trauma related events such as barn loss, financial loss, or crisis or crop or livestock loss. In regards to anxiety, this is this continuous worry of things that they can't control over the farm. Farming doesn't always offer a lot of control and when anxiety is present, then control is something that we do crave and we seek. But when you think of any weather dependence, any machinery breakdowns or any barn flood or collapses, these are all situations that are out of the farmer's control and can result in major worry and distress. <clears throat> In regards to wellness resources, we first want to emphasize that each farmer is the expert of their own farm and their own lives. No farmer knows their farm better than themselves, and it's often difficult for farmers to try to explain and for those who don't, do not farm to understand what actually goes on on the farm 24-7. Even for myself, I grew up on a farm where I quickly understood the amount of work and challenges that went into living on a farm, the family dynamics of a farming family, and often the unique challenges that came with it, prioritizing farming work before social commitments. But I cannot fully understand that. I understand what it's like to work on a farm 24 seven, especially in regards to understanding what is at stake in terms of the finances and taking care of your family on top of all that. And saying this, I just wanna briefly mention some of the wellness resources that, are, that offer a safe, unbiased and relief for some of the challenges that farmers may be experiencing. We do have Margaret here that will speak a little bit further on the OFA, um, the three programs that they did generate for farmers' well-being. But just to touch on them, it's the Farmers' Wellness Initiative, Guardian Network, and the In the Know program that allow farmers to access a 24-7 help and crisis line, free counseling for farmers and their families, and wellness programs and workshops. Some additional resources and websites include the Do More Egg website, which provides well, well-being and support for Canadian producers, the Farmer's Toolbox that was developed by the Listville Agricultural Society, and the link can be found on our Gateway website just under the Be Well, Work Well program, along with additional wellness resources there as well. There also is the Canadian Agriculture Safety Association, which coordinates and develops national initiatives and risk assessments for farmers and their families to provide a safe place to work and live. For each of the shed talks, we also want to implement some resources, such as the farmer's um, inspection checklist that was developed by Sam Verdera and his team from Trillium Mutual Insurance, who is also one of our sponsors for shed talks as well. So this checklist centers around farm organization, farm safety, and keeping track through a checklist for farmers to avoid any risk of injury and reduce some of their daily stress. So these are some of the community and support and organizations that we have developed. So with the help of these community supports and organizations, we're hoping to share the importance and collaborate knowledge to strategize better ways to support and appreciate our farmers. We envision part of the solution to the current challenges of farmers would be to ensure that there's farmer to agriculture organizations and farmer to community um, connections as well. Having charities like the Three Oaks Cabin to collaborate with and to partner with on the same mission can go a long way in emphasizing the services available for farmers and the need to keep our farmers healthy. Having agriculture organizations like the OFA and here on Mill Rights was also something that was very important to us because they are often the individuals that are interacting with the farmers the most and it's important they know how to appreciate what the farmer is going through and where, where to send someone if they need additional help. And a special thank you to Trillium Mutual Insurance and here on Mill Rights for sponsoring the Shed Talks project. And thank you all for listening. I just wanna reiterate our essential message um, for Shed Talks and that's for farming com communities to look out for their farmers, for farmers to check in on their, farm, their fellow farmers, continue that communication and connection piece to avoid any socialization along these farmers and ultimately to encourage farmers to look out for themselves, prioritize their own health and well-being, because Ultimately, it's not possible to give your full potential to your family and your farm if you can't show up for yourself first. And we hope that Shed Talks Project can contribute to this message along with that. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to um, email me at any time.
And I think now we're going to go into a panelist conversation here. I'm just gonna pull up some of the questions. Okay, I'm going to start with Tom. Sorry, this light keeps going off. I'm going to have to move. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> okay, so Tom, as a retired dairy farmer and an individual has had the courage to share your personal story and some challenges that you have faced as a farmer, would you be willing to share a little bit more about your story and your greatest advice that you have for farmers who may be facing similar challenges? Thank you, Becky. Uh, my story is kind of an old story in that it took place 30 years ago. And I was an active dairy farmer at that time. And uh, you know, for any of the old farmers on this uh, webinar, it was 1992. And if you remember, 1992 was a terrible crop year. And that's when most of the corn got plowed down. And that was the year we were building a new dairy barn. And uh, just from the weather impact, the poor crops, the stress of building, uh, and all of the uh, um, upheaval within my schedule, then that kind of pushed me into a depression. But I say it's an old story and that was 30 years ago, but it's also an old story because I've heard that story happen to so many people when they get under stress. And, uh, and that's when it um, wears a farmer down. And uh, I, uh, I'd have to say that uh, it all has to do with mental health or I also call it mental fatigue. And there's, there's still a stigma attached to that. And that's one of the things that we got to get over as a, as a group of people. Uh, and uh, Becky already mentioned about the resilience. That also would apply to firemen, to teachers, to human humans. That I think we all think we, and I would have said before it did happen to me, I was a tough person and I could uh, withstand it. But sometimes something comes along when it's just a little bigger than what you can really handle. And uh, and so it was, um, and I can see in farming at that time, I had already purchased the farm from my dad. And so it wasn't as much, but intergenerational events within a family are very stressful too. So it, it's, it's a common thing and that we have to be more open to talk about it. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Tom, so much for sharing that. I'm just going to move on to Lauren here. Being that you are a full-time farmer and a psychotherapist, um, and you have experience in both private and public practice, could you speak to some of the services that you provide and what tools that you would like to see integrated into Shed Talks? Sure. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me here. It's great to be with so many uh, incredible people and advocates for farmers um, all across Ontario and Canada and um, the world. But um, one of the things that I uh, really champion is ensuring that farmers receive really good, knowledgeable care. Sometimes, sometimes when we're looking for support and when we're teamed up with someone who doesn't really have an understanding about agriculture, it makes that connection uh, from a therapeutic perspective not as effective. So that's one of the things that I'm really committed to and that the National Farmers Mental Health Alliance does. The other piece as far as the tools within the Shed Talks, um, I want to say uh, from my perspective, I'm really excited because um, hearing that you had used, that Tom, you had shared, uh, for farmers, one of the ways we connect with other farmers is just by the sharing of knowledge, right? I don't have any trouble asking my neighbor to help me fix my sprayer or to help me, you know, shear sheep or to figure out a different way of doing something. But when it comes to our mental health, we really struggle with asking one another and supporting one another. And yet that's what our community does. In fact, there's a lot of research recently talking about how the lack of community is one of the biggest contributing factors to our mental fatigue, as Tom called it, right? That lack of community is, is really kind of an underpinning that was missing. So that's one of the reasons why we're hearing farmers saying, I, just getting together is amazing, just playing some euchre. And um, so, I mean, as a farmer, of course, if there's food involved, that's a good thing, <laughs> <laughs> right? We... We tend to like to socialize. We like to be together and we like to 
share those stories. That that sharing of story is a really great tool. Um, I would just add, offer a little bit of caution. It's good that you prearranged it. Uh, having an open mic is, is probably not um, not really helpful. Uh, I hope that's kind of answering the question that you had, Becky. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I just want to touch on your point too, having that like farmer to farmer connection. They're just something so beneficial and being able to open up to someone and kind of share those experiences that you know live like a similar lifestyle as you and may also yeah. be experiencing those similar challenges as well, for sure. Yeah, that, and, and what you just spoke on is that key piece of validation. It's a piece that we don't practice very well. And validation is incredibly important in our relationships with others. So yeah, great point. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And Margaret, so we had a gentleman share at the Shed Talks launch that, so he was, he works for an off-farm organization. Um, and often sometimes when you do work for these off-farm organizations, whether it's advocating for farmers, um, farmer sustainability, feed supply and machinery repairs, um, often these organizations say that their biggest stressor is actually interacting with the farmers um, and knowing what's at stake for them and, and seeing their stress and frustration firsthand. So I was wondering if you would be able to speak to the ways in which um, the Ontario Federation of Agriculture has worked towards better supporting farmers, um, maybe discuss the Farmers Wellness Initiative as well. Certainly. So you had made reference to the Ag Wellness and Ontario and Farmer Wellness Initiative, which was launched January of 22. And it's received funding through the Canadian Ag Partnership with support from both the federal and provincial government. So it's good that we have that, those partnerships showing that support. And it's actually LifeWorks that delivers that program with support from CMHA. And there's been a few comments related to agriculture knowledge and that awareness. And the ones that are with the Farmer Wellness Initiative line do have what I like to call personally call an egg appreciation. So there has been some training, the fact that we know sometimes it might be the comment of remove yourself from the stressor. Well, we all know that with livestock and other situations, we can't immediately do that. And having someone who has that awareness when having those discussions, that line is available to all farmers 24 seven, 365, throughout the year and it's not just OFA members it's any farmer and it doesn't have to be a farm issue that they're facing it's anything mental health related so there could be a stressor be it succession family dynamics there could be um, family issues there could be the financial health problems other things that could have came into play and reaching out to this phone line uh, to, to seek help and get some of that counseling that's through LifeWorks is a great support option. And there's further counseling options once you've went through that, that uh, can be followed up with. And I guess accessory, you mentioned some of the off farm, the ones that see and, and work with farmers and maybe are seeing these things happening. So Canadian Mental Health Association is the ones that have worked on a lot of the development and the delivery of both In the Know, which is a four hour workshop on mental health that uh, anyone can be at farmers, egg industry, or ones that work with egg as far as some of those stressors and learning a little bit more. And I can share some more of those workshop dates, but also the Guardian Network. And that's more in depth related to suicide prevention and the fact, one of the terms in it is the fact, going ahead and saying suicide. There's been a lot of terms over the years that had, like Tom mentioned, stigma still attached. And, and it is uncomfortable to say, but the more comfortable saying it, the more comfortable having that discussion. So we're saying it before it, it's that, that impact on the other ones that can't be changed having that discussion, are, are you thinking of this? Uh, and that's one of the other components with the Farmer Wellness Initiative line is there's an as aspect that supports the guardians that have had ones that have had that training and, and the reach out so that there's supports in multiple areas there. And it's the partnerships and spreading the awareness of these resources and, and getting a little bit more comfortable going to these trainings or joining them or be it the Canadian Mental Health Association, Mental Health First Aid, 
increasing your awareness and getting more comfortable with these conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. I definitely agree with you. Just being comfortable with, with these services and also talking about them too can go such a long way. I think there was a something in the chat there, um, Tom, just thanking you for sharing your personal story. And it, it is true. Those personal stories really resonate with with people. And those are something that goes a long way and just kind of lets people know that they're not alone. And you may never know how much that might help the next person, right? So thank you so much. And I'll just skip to the next question here. So I have a question for Diane. Um, so as a full-time farming family who has experienced such heartache um, and loss and who has now founded such an inspiring charity called the Three Oaks Cabin, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on the Three Oaks Cabin and in its mission as well. Thank you. And first of all, thank you to Gateway for uh, including me in your discussion today. And Becky, to get back to your question, I think we have to back up a little bit to give it some framework. Um, we were exactly that, a full-time farm family. We loved the busy farm life and we're, we're expanding our operations so our son Dallas to take it over. Um, Dallas was our third son and he was a young energetic farmer and he wanted to grow his business very aggressively. He was in, in, every, in a good sense of the word. He was also a volunteer firefighter with the Don Cuny Fire Department. And many of our volunteer fire departments um, lean heavily on the farming community to fill their positions. And both those communities are salt of the earth kind of people who, who want to help others, but don't necessarily see or accept that they also need support. So we saw the everyday stress in Dallas, but it's the, the kind of stress that you would expect to see on a farm and certainly for a young farmer who is expanding his business. So, Looking back, we can see all the dots and we can even connect some of the dots. But while they were being placed on our day to day life on the farm, we had no inkling of what was going on in his heart and in his mind and in his soul. Um, we had no idea of, of the unprocessed trauma and the chronic stress and what, what it was doing to him and the mountain of stress that was um, building up on his shoulders, like the incremental stuff that was left over from the day to day, it just created such a weight on him. And Dallas passed away by suicide on November 23rd, 2020, on a very everyday kind of day on the farm. And the trigger that, that took him from us, from the family looking in, like from, our, from the outside looking in on his life, you think that that is just so minute that should not have taken him out. But that's not taking into account the mountain that was on his shoulders. And it was the pebble that was added onto his mountain that day that created the landslide. Um, and once we, our family was crushed and um, it took time to regroup and, and we came to know all the statistics around mental wellness and anxiety and stress in both the communities for farmers and first responders. And we didn't, we couldn't not do anything knowing all those statistics. We felt compelled and moved to come alongside people who are struggling this way. So we have created a charity called Three Oaks Cabin, and it's the space that we hope to create there will be one where vulnerability and resilience can meet safely. We must become more aware of signs of mental and emotional fatigue and more courageously, courageous to lovingly and respectfully and intentionally to step into the lives of those who are struggling. So Three Oaks Cabin will be a, a three bedroom log home located in our 50 acre wood lot. And we will invite guests in need of respite free of charge and hope to be up and running by um, late summer of 2023. As a matter of fact, we poured concrete yesterday. So from here we go vertical. Um, guests will have the optional self-directed programming available to them during their stay at Three Oaks. Um, we're working closely with National Farmers Mental Health Alliance and Lorenzo Ewike, and they're thrilled to be able to offer guest free therapy sessions from professionals who are very familiar with the culture of farming and first responding communities. And that's been mentioned earlier that that familiarity with their, with their way of life and, and understanding of, of where they come from in approaching um, anxiety and stress is, is key. Um, we will also host regular workshops at the cabin to address topics surrounding mental wellness. 
Um, they will also be designed and led by registered therapists. Um, the cabin and its related programs are designed for respite, but not a place for a place to reorient, but not um, a place where we're equipped to handle crisis. Rather, it's our mission to meet and come alongside people who are struggling to prevent the crisis. And if others can be blessed in this way, then our ashes will contain beauty and our ruins offer hope, and that will be our joy in heaven. Well, thank you, Diane, so much for sharing um, your story and the background between Three Oaks um, Cabin. It's quite amazing um, and inspiring what you have done in honor of your son. And yeah, thank you so much for what you are doing for the agriculture community and first responding community as well. So thank you so much for sharing. So Tom, I have another question for you. Um, just to speak on part of your experience, um, if there were any um, advice that you have or the most important things that you or perhaps others around you implemented into your life um, and kind of helped you through this challenging time for you. I know at the time uh, when I, I call it more of a, a mental fatigue than than a mental illness. And when we say mental illness, it almost sounds like I'm, I've got some deviant happening in my head, but in actual fact, mental fatigue is just a person can just get worn out from working and decision-making. And uh, a lot of it had to do with the isolation, which you covered earlier on there, Becky, that that's a big uh, uh, deterrent to farmers. But one of the things I wrote down here is that we are all counselors. As, as farmers, as friends, and that would be, uh, and I know at the time I went to see a doctor and uh, about my depression and he said, well, just get more help. And at the time I couldn't manage myself, how could I manage more help? And it was actually my friends that uh, were counselors that were supports. And, and uh, so I think that's important that we who are the healthy ones recognize someone that might be mentally stressed and that even talking about them and the big thing is saying I care you know and that's we all can do that and uh, it, it also has to be that um, you take the time to say I care and how often we say oh goodbye or going by somebody and say how are you doing and it's not it's just a it's a salutation it's not really a meaning of how are you doing and that's what you have to stop and say is how are things going and, and how are you feeling and I remember the other one is uh, after I had my episode, I became more aware of uh, mental illness and, and I read articles on it and became conscious of someone. And I was talking to a farmer. I have no idea. I, it was, I met him in a social event. I don't know who he is or never have met him since. And I said, what did you used to do? And he said, well, I was one of those pig farmers. And this was in the 1990s. He said, I was one of those pig farmers that went broke. And uh, he said, what do you think of that? And I said, well, having come through high interest rates and the fluctuating hog prices, there's no dishonor in that. And I said, uh, it broke you as a business, but it didn't break you as a person. And I think often that we sort of uh, project what we do as who we are. And, and we have to separate those two things is that this is my business life and it's maybe not going good now, but I'm still a good person and I have a lot of value as a person. So keep that in mind. And, and I think that's one some of the things that my friends brought out. Uh, and uh, another good friend of mine I am uh, ever thankful for it is uh, when I was mentally fatigued, I saw all the bad sides of things and uh, she gave me some uh, motivational tapes. And in those, those were looking at the same situation only looking at the good side of it and that's uh, that was a uh, uh, very valuable to redirect my thinking so those were some of the things i had i had done yeah absolutely thank you so much tom that was very valuable knowledge i know i've actually heard loren speak a little bit um about those narratives that farmers sometimes generate based on their productivity or how things are going on the farm as well 
Um, Brenda, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit more on, on that. <laughs> no, but I have to tell you, Tom, inside I'm cheering you really loudly because that identity piece is so big for farmers. We identify as farmers, but we're really so much more and we kind of get stuck. We get stuck feeling like if I can't be a farmer, I have no value. And the reality is, is just as you said, there's inherent value and every one of us brings something to the table. And so uh, you absolutely spoke very, very straight wisdom, straight uh, Tom, Tom's wisdom moment was just a moment ago when he spoke to that identity piece. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Tom, for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know Diane spoke on this a little bit, how it can be so difficult to kind of recognize um, some of those heavy stressors among farmers, because this is something that's such um, day to day for them as well. But Lorraine, I was wondering if you had any um, coping mechanisms or any stress management strategies that you would suggest farmers would consider, consider perhaps in those busier months when they feel like they are a bit overwhelmed and maybe um, perhaps they're not able to attend these shed talks monthly as well. If you have yeah. any. Sure, absolutely. And, and actually, again, that piece is really big. When we, when we really take issue with, with kind of who we are, and all that we do bring to the table, um, we can grow our sense of, of identity a little bit outside of our farming world or a little bit outside of even our first responder world. As Diane mentioned, we're working with Three Oaks Respite Cabin and so we work with first responders as well. Um, but back to the coping skills, I'm gonna kind of share a little tidbit if that's okay with you, Becky. Uh, it's, called, it, it's called Sort and Store. And so basically, I encourage farmers, particularly during really busy seasons, when you wake up in the morning, you, you have a choice right there. And choice is kind of a hard word, but you have a you have a job to do. In fact, typically, when you wake up in the morning during those during those long, busy days of farming where you've only gotten, say, six hours of sleep at best, maybe two, um, you know, you're kind of are inundated. Is there any are, does everybody kind of know what I mean? You kind of wake up in the morning, you're like, oh my goodness, and just this long list of to-dos kind of come flooding in. And before you know it, we feel really overwhelmed. And that's really where anxiety grows, because anxiety is future-based. Anxiety is not here in this moment right now. It's always future-based. And so when you wake up in the morning, Going through this process called sort and store is really helpful. And basically it's isolating what, what's on my list of things to do. Is that something that needs my attention right now? Like, is that something that I really need to take care of right now? And if the answer is no, you kind of tie it up in a box, put it on a shelf, kind of set it aside for now and really zero in on the things that you need right now. And it just avoids that feeling of overwhelm. So in those times when you can't make it to the shed talks, kind of grounding yourself. And, and there's a number of grounding techniques that we teach. Um, but that is, that's one of the school skills is to go through that process of sort and store. One of the other things to do is this thing called mindfulness. Now, sometimes farmers might, and, and I am a farmer, so I kind of roll my, my own eyes at myself sometimes when I think about the word mindfulness. But but honestly and truly, mindfulness is just paying attention on purpose. And, and we pay attention to a lot of things. I mean, if, if as a farmer, when I'm out on the field, I can hear that new ticking in the engine of my John Deere, it, I was promised that it would never happen, but somehow that equipment continues to break down on me. And so I pay attention on purpose. And so likewise, with our own well-being, we can take a moment to pay attention on purpose. I was working with a cattle farmer. And so one of his goals to avoid those feelings of overwhelm, to avoid that kind of rushing in and just feeling like I can't enjoy a moment, he would go up to a bit of a knoll on the hill and just take five minutes and look out over his land and take some deep breaths. For me, when I'm in the barn and it's lambing season, and that means really busy, right? Because I've got all sorts of lambs being born, got to make sure all of their start is really solid but I'll take a minute and just watch the lambs. When you feed the ewes, the lambs will run behind them and we call them lamb races. It's absolutely one of the most peaceful, funny, relaxing things you could watch as a, as a sheep farmer. And so folks taking those moments, they don't have to be very long. Taking those moments to just pay attention on purpose is really, really helpful. So just a couple of snippets, Becky, if you'd like some more, I'm happy to share. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just want to thank you first for sharing and just your point on um, having that 
that kind of check that mindfulness checklist in the morning, I think can go a long way, especially with farmers, they do wake up with those long lists. And there's so much on the farm that can happen that's outside their control, whether like you said, it is machinery breakdown or the feed supply shows up a day early and their rest, their, their to-do list is kind of thrown off for the day. So yeah, just taking those mindfulness moments can, can go a long way in helping to reduce and, some and, stress. Yeah. Well. And that issue with control, there's so much beyond our control. So we really have to learn to, to focus on what we can control, not on what we can't control. And, and it's, it's challenging to do that. It, I, can't, I, I don't wanna pretend that it's easy to change the way that we've been thinking or to change the big feelings that we have, but focusing on what we can control, not on what we can't control is really within our scope of, of ability. So that means that, you know what, I can't control the weather, but I can control how prepared my equipment is for the most part when I'm able to get out there and finally start plowing. So does that mean that I've got a few backup parts? If you own equipment like we do, you need some backup <laughs> parts, right? So it means that I always, with our hay buying, I've always got a couple teeth in the background because I know I'm going to break some. And so that's part of the focusing on what you can control and not on what I can't control. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I think there is some questions in, in the chat. I think sure. Aaron, you can probably help answer as well. Absolutely. Happy to. There was someone that said during the COVID period when prices for supplies went up and everyday shortages of parts and materials was the norm. How much did that add to the stress of a farm life? I'm not sure if you or perhaps Margaret maybe would be able to help answer. I'm kind of eager to jump in on that one because yeah. I, do also, <laughs> I do also farm that we have beef and sheep and field crops as well. And uh, it certainly added up and just kind of growing on some of what Lauren was saying, the backup parts, but unfortunately we can't have a whole duplicate sitting there. So no. <laughs> supply chain and other things we've definitely seen. And normally when we're in the field and we have that break, we have that window and I'm sure everybody looking back spring, there was good part of spring, but then there was an extremely wet part of spring and then we were dry in the summer, but then once harvest, last year's harvest was wetter than this one. But normally if you only have a couple of days to be waiting and sometimes it amplifies it when you're waiting for that part and you're watching the neighbor's equipment go by and they're trying to get theirs off. And it's really hard to, you know, it's beyond your control, but at the same time, you're so used to, I, I almost growing up, I didn't grow up getting to watch MacGyver, but the term MacGyver, I knew what that term was right from a young age on farms because you're you're trying to figure out how to do that. And we're one of the industries, and this has come up with a few different things, the fact that we are also a consumer. So yes, we're producing food, fiber, and fuel, but we're also utilizing it. So not only are we seeing an increase in production, but we're seeing it as an individual, as part of our families as well. We're seeing it increase in the business, putting a stressor there. Uh, there have been some market advantages, but as, as numbers have went for up for everything, it's that we're dealing with large numbers for everything now, mm -hmm. including for that personal family. And okay, this thing that I wanted to do for the family, can I do that now, is also coming into play. And, and making those decisions. And even though you know something's beyond your control, you're still sitting there in that, that moment of, well, it is something I can ask my neighbor, but at the same time, he's trying to use that small time frame yeah. or she's trying to do that small time frame. So it's, it's definitely, and the amount of things that proverbially beyond our control with even government decisions, conflict, climate change, a lot of policy and regulation that while we know we have working together on what the future looks like, some decisions have different impacts on different businesses in different ways uh, that have definitely intensified the pressure. Yeah, Margaret, I completely agree. She really hit the nail on the head. So thank you, Margaret, uh, uh, as well. But uh, during that period with COVID, one of the other considerations is we know that we have multi-generational farms and it's very common that we've got multi-generations. When COVID hit, we had grandparents who could no longer, you know, do their part on the farm. And we had farmers who were suddenly homeschooling their children while working on the farm. And many of us work off farm as well. I mean, I think the statistics is somewhere closer to 60% that farmers have a secondary off farm job. 
So um, not only when those price supplies went up, but those labor shortages were completely amplified to high, high levels uh, because our, our mainstay was really cut short and our responsibilities grew like it did for many other people, but very different on the farm, on the farm world. So um, yeah, COVID really did impact it. And, and we see that in the numbers now. We see that in the research numbers now. Um, certainly, if you speak to private clinicians, the number of, of people looking for mental health support has drastically increased, including in our rural communities. And unfortunately, during COVID, our rural communities were really impacted. I mean, a lot of the kind of urban answers were, well, just offer your services you know, on a website or through door delivery or DoorDash or whatever those, you know, well, we didn't have DoorDash in our area, <laughs> right? In most areas of rural Ontario. And so there was some difficulties in in really uh, government understanding some of our plights. And and that and and just as as Margaret indicated or said um regarding the policies and some of those development. Uh, and Dr. Leaf Deacon, as you know, he he's a huge advocate for us in rural communities uh, in that lens. Absolutely, yeah. I was going to say, I like just just one other point that yeah. over the last couple of years, because farmers go out to those commodity meetings, those farm organization meetings, farm shows, other things. I know that was something I personally noticed was there was lots of ones would go ahead and talk to the neighbor at it or talk to somebody a couple counties over that they saw them at those meetings, they saw them at those shows or organizations such as OFA or CFFO or NFU or other organizations that they recognized. But when they were willing to say it in person, when they saw you, they weren't necessarily at that point ready to pick up the phone during the last couple of years. It was normally that there was more of a pressure point before that phone would get picked up because within farming, the amount of times in the last nine years I've heard, well, I didn't want to bug. Go ahead, bug when it's the smaller thing because normally farmers do wait till, okay, this is beyond my control, then reach out. And I'm not meaning just mental health, I'm meaning any issue. It's you're trying to take care of it and you don't want to bug. So the last couple of years, not being in person, there were different ones that I, Personally, I was hoping more would pick up that phone, but understanding why you might feel that hesitancy in picking up the phone versus when you see someone, it's a lot easier to say that to them versus picking up the phone some days. Absolutely. Well, I think we are almost out of time, um, but I do wanna thank all of you so much for um, engaging in such a powerful panelist and for being here today. Um, and yeah, I think I'll pass it over to Gwen if she's still there. I'm unmuting, but I could start, <laughs> you know, you, you saw it earlier, so we'll see. <laughs> um, this has been absolutely remarkable. I thank you so much. I, I, the few little notes that I wrote down on the side here, Tom's wisdom, Tom, I'm not going to, oh, there I go. So I've got to stop video again. Um, but Tom, uh, I loved Tom's wisdom. I, I will keep that up on you for sure. Um, sort and store. I love that. We all need to sort and store. Um, having backup parts, uh, Margaret and um, Loren, um, we all need backup parts too. You can use, you can think about that in different ways, but, you know, relating to that. And and also, um, Becky, can you not hear, Dan? Um, and, and for um, Becky, I got a text saying, I have an office full of people listening. Great job. So just want you to know that that's happening as well. Um, and for Diane, your legacy, remarkable. Thank you so much. Um, this this is this is an amazing conversation. It I'm sorry it had to end so quickly. I'm sure we could go on much longer. Um, the challenge uh, for local governments, the province in our country, is to recognize the importance of supporting our farmers to have safe, healthy, productive careers in agriculture because we all recognize how very, very important they are to our local and world economy. Bringing bright minds like our speakers and panelists to focus on these problems and issues 
is of incredible value. Today's lecture demonstrates what Gateway is all about. That is bringing relevant health information and research data to our rural residents. Thank you, Becky, for creating a conversation surrounding this topic and to the panelists for all your insight. A huge thank you to our sponsors for their continued support. Without them, the lecture series would not be possible. They include CIBC, Private Wealth Management, DeJager, Town Square IDA Pharmacy and Godrich, Curentel, Libro Credit Union, McEwen and Fagan Insurance Brokers, Godrich, Zayers, Godrich. Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Health is a not-for-profit organization with charitable status, and we greatly appreciate and welcome the support we receive. If you would like to support Gateway for this lecture series or other activities that Gateway undertake, I encourage you to visit Gateway's website. There you, will, you are able to contact us if you would like to volunteer for our many projects, such as summer camps, student research projects, or visit our new online store. Thank you again to all of you for joining us today. It looks like we had really high numbers for this, so I'm thrilled about that. And we look forward to seeing you at the next lecture series at 12 noon on Tuesday, February the 7th, when Leslie Walker, Gateway Research Associate, will be our speaker. She and her panel will be discussing societal implications of artificial intelligence. Mark your new calendar as these lectures occur the first Tuesday of each month. And please pass the lecture series information along to your network to expand our reach with the aim of promoting the knowledge economy, reducing social isolation and supporting Gateway's mission of improving the health and quality of life of rural residents. We at Gateway wish all of you the best of good health and happiness in 2023 and look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you and goodbye.